And anyway, see if Texas can keep this momentum going. And Sam Ellinger starting. Ellinger firing deep, and he's looking for Colin Johnson. And Derek Stingley, the freshman, was right there. How about Stingley? Highly decorated, true freshman, number one ranked corner, five star, all world against a veteran. Gets a little push off, anticipating that push off, comes back to the football and gets his left hand on it. I mean, are you kidding me? It's a true freshman going up against one of the top receivers in the Big 12. The running start, Stevens just unloads into Brewer, but he holds on to it. Ellinger taking a deep shot for Johnson. Colin Johnson is out there. Did he hold on to it? Yes, he did. I think I think Stingley got it. The ball was kind of between the two of them as they hit the ground, and then Stingley, after they hit the ground, took it away. That's the one-on-one -on -one matchup Texas wants. You see a... Well, that's a tough angle there. Yeah, that might be able to see better here. That's a true freshman against a veteran, one of the top receivers in the country. A great matchup. See, that ball is loose when they hit the ground. I don't know. I just don't know if Johnson had possession when he hits the ground. And Stingley just ends up taking it away from him after they go to the ground. Simultaneous possession would go to Texas, but from the angle we saw a moment ago, that looked more like the Stingley had it. It looked like his hand is in there the entire time. Obviously, the ball is loose there, still loose. Boy, I, there's no way. There's no way that's a, a possession and a catch for Texas, if anything. Incompletion or an interception for LSU. The ball incomplete. hits the ground prior to possession by either the receiver or the defender. This is an incomplete pass. It'll be second down. Need some plays tonight. There are favorite receivers, and then there are locked-on receivers, and that's exactly what he does with shorts as he finds not good for defensive coordinators. After the penalty, first down. Appler looking in zone, fires, caught shorts, has it. Touchdown. Miley, the optic coordinator, has come in here with a great plan. Had a trips cluster to the field here. Little levels, a corner with a flat underneath it. Quan short image. Everybody else back in coverage. Epler fires wide open. Touchdown, David. In the least. Shelton Epler's thrown for a couple touchdowns tonight. This time he's able to find a wide open David Fitzwater. It's a 17 to 4 edge pressure. Play clock winding down. Here they come. End zone shot. It is knocked away at the last second by Derek Stingley Jr. Dave Aranda told us when Stingley showed up for bowl practice last year, essentially as a high school senior, he was the best cornerback on the team. Mind you, that included Greedy Williams. He's that talented. I mean, ball skills, instincts. Long season, but already both those guys not starting out to the expectation they hold themselves to. On third and five, Stingley had a hand on it. Almost took it away. We talked to Ed Ogeron about that yesterday. When can you identify guys that may have issues? You said you can see it from day one of the junior season. You got to nip it in the bud early. This guy's going to have a great career. Oh, the instincts. That's a quick slant. The ball is not in Shelton Epler's hand. Glenn Logan out. He's had big opportunities. He's capitalized on it. Epler, incomplete. Cole, what difference? June was dismissed from the team. He showed up in Nakadesh late. Shot incomplete. Play clock almost ran out on him. Lipscomb open on the out route. It's a first down for Vanderbilt. Tracked by Derek Stingley Jr. That might be the first completion Stingley's allowed all season. And they took a page out of LSU's playbook. These tight splits create a lot of space on the outside. Lipscomb just attacks that leverage and has a lot of green grass on the outside. Good, accurate throw by Riley Neal. And you're right, Stingley's a tough one. And remember, Dave Aran. Four-man rush into the end zone. Almost picked by Stingley. That'll be an interesting matchup all afternoon. Stingley and Lipscomb, if that's how it plays out. And Stingley almost got him back. This ball is just late. Riley Neal's got to let this go two or three steps earlier. A little late allowed Stingley to undercut to that point to measure LSU's wide receivers versus Alabama's wide receivers. Riley Neal delivers a strike to Kalijah Lipscomb. 
He makes Stingley miss, and he takes it to the four. Riley Neal week one, I don't think he stands in here and makes this type of throw because he has Kalijah Lipscomb. Great route, great leverage, and with guys in his face, Riley Neal delivered a strike there. We had him week one. There was half for Vanderbilt. Keyshawn Vaughn is the running back. Blitz up the middle. Out to the outside. It's a first down for Coming into this game, just one reception on third down after last year having an SEC best 27. Exact same play. They ran for a third down conversion. Neal fires sideline. Broken up by Derek Stingley Jr. And he's just so talented. Locked in on man coverage, gets his eyes around really early, so sees that back shoulder throw coming from a mile away. To be that young and have second down 10. Neal, end zone shot. Stingley with the coverage. Was that caught? Wow. And through Stingley. I didn't think there was any way this ball was getting to Lipscomb's hands. And you know what? I think they got to take a look at that one. Well, it certainly wasn't controlled at the outset. And was he still in bounds when he came down? But I, yeah, that's going to be the tough part. Yeah. yeah. By the time it hits his. Early on the field, it was an incomplete pass. The previous play is under review. I don't know, right knee and right elbow. That sh that angle shows us that's the side of the body that came down first. Probably. Or was it control? Exactly. And his arm is under it, but the nose of the ball does touch the turf. Touchdown, six interceptions, led this team to an 11-2 record. First pass of the game goes up top, far side, incomplete. Looking for Jordan Nathan. Well, we talked a little bit about Jordan Love and what he brings to the table, but he's a guy that's just kind of a modest competitor. Doesn't get real hyped up, just gets his job done. Nice, cool, calm, collected, inside the pocket. Can make every throw. That one is caught by Nathan. Perfectly thrown football by Jordan Love. This guy's got to help him. On third down, Love is flushed, throws on the run, and that'll be incomplete. It'll be... Four-man rush, going up top again. This one is intercepted in the country, and he just happens to be a freshman. Look at the way he plays, just perfectly stays in the hip pocket, looks back for the football, and then goes up at the highest point and catches this football. This is what they teach on Sundays, and this kid is only a freshman. He couldn't play that football any better. A successful first down, trying to run the football. Jordan Love. Nice tight spiral just off the fingertips. Oh, grass, which is what it is. Spread offenses. Here the pile drives for the first down. They fake it to him. Trask looking to throw downfield, and it's underthrown. Trying to come back for the ball is Trevon Grind. Trask in the pocket. He has good protection on first down and takes another downfield shot, but it's overthrown. Down on him quickly. He needs six. Tigers showing a three-man rush, and they drop eight into coverage. Trask has time underneath. Catch made right at the marker by Grimes. It's Malik Davis taking his turn at tailback. Trask from the pocket across the middle, and it's caught by Pitts. And the tight end has been a matchup problem. Made a big game against Auburn, five catches. Yeah, he, he is a great friend of a quarterback because of his size. Look at Trask handling the snap. The snap is high. We've seen some high snaps, but he's in rhythm. He stays in rhythm by being all power five tight ends in receptions. And his second in all of FBS. From the 45, Trask zips a slant, and it's another catch made right in front of Stingley. Trask across the middle again, again targeting Pitts, who makes a nice hands catch down in the red zone. He beats Stingley. This guy, last week against Auburn, he was the guy, right? Trask knows he's coming back to him. He moves the safeties with his eyes, hands get underneath the ball as it gets... See what LSU does to adjust on defense. It's Trask to begin the third quarter, and he's looking to throw. Near sideline, coming back to make the catch is Jefferson as he... Long drive that are gassing the defense. His last comment, but how about our offense? 
Best looking to throw again, Tom, and went very wow. similar route. Once again, Jefferson comes back and beats Stingley. Yeah, they come right back to that matchup with Van Jefferson to the boundary, going right after the strength of the LSU defense. Stingley, Dave Aranda says he's been the best player on this defense. He looks and turns, by the time he turns for the football, it's another. Now Stingley, the guy they're picking on there, all world recruits. Some said the top recruit in the last recruiting class came in ready to play as a true freshman in this league. And you've not seen teams kind of go after him no. until tonight like this. No, I mean, they leave him on an island. He doesn't have a lot of help. I mean, they, they trust him. He, young man just turned 18 recently. So he's a young guy but plays as a veteran. Trask zips it again. Once again, it's Jefferson beating Stingley. You know, opposing quarterbacks, when they target that DB, were 10 of 27 coming in. Right. Watch him turn Stingley's shoulders. Boom, it's over. Great route. We keep going back to Van Jefferson. Well schooled. By Trask pumps, delivers, touchdown, Jefferson. It Van Jefferson. A great drive. Watch Trask pump fake. Thought he might go to the outside, but instead he has the option to come back to the inside. And there's the big hit there by the linebacker, 45. Yeah, Jefferson turning his back with the 240 pounder. Boom, just trying to dislodge yep. the football. Clean play in, in your yeah, view? I think it looked clean. It looked obviously really physical. Look, see, he's showing fade. He shows fade. He caught Trask off guard. He almost threw the fade, and then he went back to the inside. They fake it to P. Ryan Trask looking to throw for the end zone. Diving pick. Derek Stingley made the pick. He'd been picked. Protocol comes back, and I want you to watch and really see the technique that he plays with. Watch his eyes. Watch how he's looking back, anticipating the football, able to adjust and find the ball. So the location, the anticipation, and the eyes on the ball gave Stingley a chance to make that big interception. Trask has time and delivers across the middle. That's Pitts going down, and he couldn't come up with it. It'll be. Nix lobs it. Incomplete intended for Stove again. Remember the interception he threw against Florida in this situation? Blitz the fade to the corner and way out of bounds intended for Seth Williams. See, I, like that, I like that call, though. Against Florida on third and long, after a penalty, they threw down the middle. They got it picked off. This time, you throw, but you throw in a safe area to the outside. Either your best player gets it, nobody gets it. Stingley had great coverage. Try to take three points out of the drive. So they're going to have to settle for the field goal attempt. To... He's good from 53 a year ago. We'll see. They're going to throw. Nix is going to go deep on the sideline. It's intercepted. Derek Stingley, are you kidding me? But remember, he won the Oregon game. But I've never, and I talked to you this watching practice Thursday, Brad, I've never seen a guy with ball skills like Derek Stingley. And what did Coach Ogeron said? And he's going to be a receiver he's eventually. Gonna, yes, he's going to go both ways. He promised his parents his first two years at corner, his third year is going to do both. His fourth year would be an end. He's Stingley not one way. Stevens to the other now. And Nick's going right back to the slant and too high and too behind. Blitz off the corner. Nick's has to run around it. Throws on the run and in and out of the hand to Seth Williams. Right. Nick's had to get out of the pocket. Pass interference. Defense number three. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. But also got called for the pass interference. He thought it was Stingley that was holding him. Jacoby Stevens almost. Here comes a blitz in the secondary. Wow, I thought Stingley was going to pick that off and take it home. But if, if it had been a little bit more of an accurate pass, he probably would have, but the ball was thrown to the outside. 
and he had no chance. Stingley reads it. He breaks on it, but the ball wasn't thrown well enough to be picked off. Because it saves that yes. cheap shot I that may so come too. in when you're trying to fight it. Agreed. Well, they certainly needed it, and now the streak on the sideline as Seth Williams trying to find the handle and couldn't, and Derek Stingley covering again. Yeah, that's not your regular true freshman corner out there. He's about six foot two and about as comfortable as a guy on an island could be. Doesn't look phased, does he? Not at <laughs> all. Closest I can remember, really, with his type of attitude is Charles Woodson covering him back in the day. Knicks looked over the middle, now being chased by Fahoku, and he's just got to launch it downfield. It's caught Holy cow. by Williams. I thought he was throwing it away. What a play. Well, that one, number 18 won the battle, didn't he? And that's why Gus Malzahn threw, threw the one at the end of the half. Because that's what Seth Williams does sometimes. I thought he was throwing it in the bench. So now, Seth Williams. If Bo Nix was out of bounds before he threw the ball. Nope, he jumped in the that. air. Yeah. Little jump pass. <laughs> and a, a Eric Monroe takes his spot on the secondary as Nix throws. Incomplete intended for Williams again, but that one did get to the bench. Nick's on second and eight. Looks left, goes left. Back shoulder throw to Williams, got it to him. And remember, we, if I was Gus Malzahn, I would have reminded Bo Nix, you did it before. You have some history with this. Just do what you did. Relax and do what you get against Oregon. First and ten from the 20. Nix looks that way again, goes to the end zone. Broken up, flags down though, and Stingley down as well. Be the second starter in the secondary shaken up for LSU here in the last five minutes. Yeah, I think Eric Monroe ran into Stingley on the play, didn't he? He came across and broke up the play, and he also wipes out Stingley. Pass interference, defense number 24. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. His left hand, I guess, was holding on the play. Didn't see it from that look. Then he got hit by his he own sure teammate did. on the side of the face, it looks like. Wow. He kind of, they kind of got their legs crossed up on the play, to tell you the truth, and that's where Seth went down. Oh, and then he gets his left arm pinned. He gets his head hit on the play. A little bit of everything. He's climbing to his feet. Bring in Gene Steratore on the pass interference call. Gene. <laughs> First down at the 25. Flashing. Down the sideline and he overshot Devontae Smith. Now, there's two sides of this, you know, staying in the game for Tua. Yes, his ankle may get a little sore, but maybe he'll pick up the tempo of competing in this game. Because right now, he is not in sync at all. He said they call us the rideouts now. We catch and we just ride out, right out of everybody's vision, usually. You know, Ellis was not in a sack, but he didn't have pressure. To it. Deep on the sideline, Devontae Smith, who catches everything. Touchdown, Alabama. Get back to the touchdown. I think the LSU bench was changing up the defense. Watch Stingley and other LSU players look to the bench when the ball snapped and it's over. Devontae Smith, who we saw against Ole Miss, Stingley's pointing yes. the other way. He would just, he's saying. First down at the 46. Time to the loads, goes deep, far sideline. Devontae Smith got it. Yep, they bring in an extra lineman, and they go deep. You're in good phase, but Deontay Smith is seeing the ball, and Stingley is not until the last second. Smith goes up and grabs it. I remember what we said that Judy told us, Smitty catches everything. He dropped one today, but he didn't drop that one. 32-yard pickup. Center, which is a rarity. Najee Harris behind it. Fakes it to him. Wants a long ball and come by Smith. 
with Stingley all over him. I thought Queen was going to dislodge right there. No, it was actually Stevens, number three, was going to knock Smith off his route. Stingley could not get there in the great hands. situation when you have a big play. Don't think plays, think players. And they went to their reliable player who schooled Stingley at the line of scrimmage. He beat him in the first yard of the route. Stingley's got no one to cling to on that one. Now Joe Burrow, he changed it along with his head coach, and we'll get into that in a second. He lied to the target of Loa, going deep on his first throw to Smith. <laughs> Smith, he's gone! Touchdown, Alabama! Eighty-five yards. It ain't over. I was just about to say, LSU just needs to keep everything in front of them. So what do they do? Bump and run to the outside? I don't quite understand. All you have to do is keep the receiver in front of you, let him have 10, 12 yards, and you go bump and run and allow that guy to throw to his favorite receiver. Remember, second and 26. Seeing freshman, but a true freshman nonetheless. Plumley throwing a deep ball, and it is almost intercepted. Double coverage on Jonathan Mingo, and a diving attempt intercepted by Grant help it the all-american safety he's been banged up by an ankle and thigh problem and when you throw that takeoff route to the short side of the field that safety doesn't have matt corral from southern california long beach poly is throw too high in oxford empty set on second and goal jefferson throws and it's broken up There's not saying they're going to win this one but they're pulling down seven three Third down and long. Jefferson going deep. He overthrows the intended team in Auburn. But I still think they are within reach of the playoff. They just need a lot of help. Starkle's pass is caught by Wood. So let, let's handle that sub game. Tell me a team with a better resume still at 12 and 1. Starkle's pass off through there. Just a great way to illustrate. Uh, as that screen pass is almost intercepted by Stingley. Just how uh, special that family is. It's Arkansas trying to mount some offensive production here, going back to that screen again. And still no recruiting base. That's the problem. Is you have to go to Texas, and now AM gets first pick of the Texas kids. Starko's pass incomplete. Well, there is a guy coming. Another of the 14 seniors honored before the game, playing in their final home game, and going out with a bang as we approach halftime. Mond under pressure, just heaved it up. Been what's happened to him all season. He's going to leave the pocket. We've seen Joe Burrow leave the pocket. We saw the penalty on the first time he left the pocket. But these are the kind of hits that Kellen Mond has taken all year. Gets rid of the ball, hit on the ground, and those... Low throw, Jamon Osborne the catch. Crazy drill possible, so they were on target. Helen Mon comes out throwing, and it's in the side of the field. Well, it has been mystifying because it certainly seems like there's a lot of talent on this defense. They just haven't played up to it. Deep throw, Kendrick Rogers. Free safety in the middle. Second down and nine. Zamir White in the Georgia backfield. From going to go deep. Down the sideline, and that one is caught by Landers. They waved it out of bounds. Stingley was on coverage. Let's see if this deserves a replay, because it was caught. Stingley pushes him wide. Another perfect throw. Now, left foot came down first, I believe, and out of bounds. That's part of the coverage. But look who's starting off hot in this game, and we've talked about it in this building. Over to me. Jake Farm and the dogs back for you. Second and ten. From oh, 
incomplete too far and the only dependable player you can see his skills on that run from throws Scott complete to Simmons for a first down into LSU territory at the 41. Now you got bump and run, and you got to attack bump and run. And this time Simmons beats him at the line of scrimmage. Stingley forces a good throw, and Jake Fromm puts it right there. Now. They got to put some points on the board here. They got to get at least a field goal. Fromm, pressure coming. Throws complete. Simmons got a little bit of it back. Good smart play that time by Derek Stingley Jr. He was willing to concede the short play. Decent protection. Let him catch it. Make the tackle. And he did. So Rodrigo Blankenship will come out. He's 24 of 29 on the year. He missed just a <laughs> first down. From pressure coming. Throws. Far side. It's intercepted by Stingley. His ball skills are unbelievable. For a young player, a year from now, he will be playing both ways for LSU. The fifth interception of the season for the true freshman. And watch how late he turns around and finds the ball and makes the play. Watch, he turns at the last second and finds it and makes the catch. One-handed. On teachable skills. Defensive backs are usually there. They have trouble making those catches. Perfect catch. Holds off the receiver and makes the interception. Jake had gone all the way since the South Carolina game without throwing an interception. It's only his fourth of the year, but it's certainly costly. On the wideouts. Second down at the 37 of LSU. From right, right. the out, got it complete out to it came Matt out. Well, it came out right at the end, I think. Stingley's on coverage. He had it, but watched Stingley get his hands on it. Landers had a shot, couldn't come up with you it. You gotta make that catch. You gotta yes, help the quarterback. Absolutely. I, I think he blitz coming from throws up in the air. Again, Landers can't hold it. Contested very strongly. Stingley and then Delpit comes over later. Two great players. Landers is open, gets inside. Perfect throw. Kendall, great job by Derek Stingley. Sure was. Come on, that's hard. It's hard to play man to man all over the field. Don't know. Point four points a game. And LSU has run up 27, and we still have a lot of football left. From, and that is intercepted by Stingley. His quickness is incredible. His hands are incredible. He baited that throw. Second pick of the day for the freshman. I'm going to say Brad's right again. He's not a future superstar. He's a superstar. A year ago, Coach Orgeron said, we've got a special player coming in. Look at him. He anticipates the throw. He looks back, and his hands fights off the receiver. Squatting on the play, gambling on the play like all the good corners do. They have such faith in themselves that they want to make that big play. They squat, they cut underneath, they don't worry about the tackle. They go for the pick six. And, and that did. defensive line, man, they are still going 100 miles an hour. Here's a slant to Pickens. And Pickens brought down by guys to the team earlier this week. Good front told us. First down. From throws too high and too wide intended for Pickens. From a third and ten. Bringing an extra rusher. From down the middle, incomplete intended for that could have made a difference or at least could have earlier. Another fourth down, fourth and ten. From back shoulder throw on a catch by Pickens. And could a guy like this have made, there's the offside, yep. a difference. It was Caleb on chase. Well, he, he wouldn't have hurt him. That's for sure. Look at the skills he has. Of the day. Brian Herring with Fromm. High snap. Fromm throws quickly and completes it to Pickens for the touchdown. Because Georgia's done very little on the ground. Second down and 10. They have to pass now, obviously. And Jake Fromm going deep. Simmons, the intended receiver, and Stingley was back. And another three and out on third down and 10. They tried to bring pressure. Hurts running out of time. Just lofts it in the air and they yanked down the receiver. Stingley pulled down the receiver. There's still no flag on the near sideline. 
Jaden Hazelwood, the intended target. Marcel Brooks, part of a blitz. Yeah, he definitely grabbed him and altered his course. That that very easily and, and should have been pass interference. Stingley knew he was beat, and he's just trying to catch up. But at the end, for LSU's offense, and we're playing undermanned in our secondary. On target to C.D. Lamb is Jalen Hurts. No weakness on that LSU offense. Hurts had C.D. Lamb open. They could not connect what would have been a touchdown. Yeah, yeah he had him, and that's a throw that Jalen Hurts has to connect with. I just think his feet weren't set. I think Jalen Hurts' feet were not set, and that's why he didn't make an accurate throw. That should be an easy of Brendan Radley Hiles. If Oklahoma were to win the game, he would not be able to play the, the first half of the next ball game. Long throw incomplete. Four-man rush. Lawrence gets it out. Incomplete. Tried to find Ross on a slant. Derek Stingley Jr., the fine true freshman corner, was there. And the LSU Tigers defense gets a stop. How good of a matchup will that be with Ross against Stingley? Both, both these receivers, Ross or Higgins, with their size going up against Stingley, who's had a, just an incredible freshman year. 6'1", 190 Second and five, Lawrence has got it, rolls out, delivers a long throw over the head of Justin Ross. You see the arm strength, but it wasn't accurate. Yeah, it gives him that zone read feel and look for the defense, trying to bait them up, trying to get those linebackers and defensive backs to come up and try to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup he can win. And because Stingley was in great position, he tried to go back shoulder to get the ball to Ross where he can maybe have a chance, but obviously the ball sails on him. Good coverage there by the Tigers. Judgment that happened not popular with the LSU fans. Play action launching downfield for Ross, who's just too tightly covered. How about it's pressured? Stingley was in coverage there. How about the coverage by Stingley? It, it, it's almost like that side of the field is shut down. And Justin Ross is an elite receiver. And what I love about Stingley as a young corner in the college game, especially, is he played receiver in high school. He has those instincts, and as soon as that receiver starts to peek up with his eyes. LSU giving a big cushion. Chase on pressuring the quarterback enough. Play on ETN. As you well know, my friend, think about the option. Quarterback's going to take a hit. <laughs> yeah. Lawrence did that time. It's a low throw. Guards five touchdown passes. Lawrence, desperate to answer, delivers a high throw. Kirk, he's just been second and ten. Sometimes when you try to put so much on it the ball will sail on you play action another long throw catch made by ross who's